Hi, uh, I'm Professor Cody Powell. I am continuing my course on Fundamentals of Smart Systems. We are now on Lecture 2. We are continuing to talk about simulating systems in Simulink. Today we're going to be talking about custom equations and custom code. As I've mentioned, Simulink is an incredibly versatile and powerful tool for simulating very complex dynamic systems. And basically my experience has been uh, as long as you can put math to a system, Simulink can probably help you simulate that system in dynamic ways. Uh, so. Today we're going to be just showing you how you make it a little bit more versatile. So what I'm going to start off with is a very simple model of a tank. I'm a chemical engineer, uh, so I'm just going to show how you might simulate a tank using a very s uh, simple volume balance. So let's say here is our tank. Our tank has some volume V. Let's say that it has some flow coming into it. I'm going to use the symbol Q to represent that flow and specifically Q in. And let's suppose we have a valve here and we can directly control the, the flow rate of Q in coming into our system. Let's give Q in units. It's always very important when you're modeling systems to carefully consider the units. I'm going to say Q is coming in in cubic meters per minute. I'm going to say my volume is in units of cubic meters. Let's also say we can control the flow going out of our tank. Similarly with a valve and let's call that Q out which will have the same units as Q in. So it's pretty simple and you don't have to be a chemical engineer or even any kind of an engineer to develop a pretty simple volume balance of the system um, and if this might be new to you that's okay too. So what we're going to say we're going to define a new variable that is the rate of change of volume in the tank. So this is how fast the volume would be accumulating in the tank. So this is a derivative called dv dt. So specifically this is the change in volume with respect to the change in time. This uh, variable, because it is cubic meters, I'm gonna, we're going to arbitrarily choose our time to be minutes for the simulation that we'll develop. So dv dt is going to have units also of meters cubed per minute. And basically, we would define a control volume around the liquid in this tank, and we would say, how is energy accumulating? So this is the accumulation term. Uh, and when, when you do these balances, you learn that accumulation equals what's coming into our system minus what's going out of our system uh, plus what might be generated or minus what might be consumed. So this is our balance. Uh, nothing is being generated or consumed in our system at this point, so we don't have to worry about that. And this balance is actually very simple. Coming in, we have Q in, and going out, we have Q out. So following that, accumulation equals in minus out. This is a this is a volume balance, and this differential equation is all we need for this very simple model that we can implement in Simulink. So I'm going to fire up Simulink, get it running, and get it ready to implement this simple model. So in Simulink, we have our blank canvas here. Again, I'm going to go to my library browser. I'm going to go to Simulink. We've talked about sinks and sources and uh, continuous blocks like the integrator. I'm going to go to a different kind of block here now. And this one is user defined functions. So in user defined functions, there are a lot of different options. We're going to grab this basic function called a MATLAB function. So I'm going to come here to my MATLAB function. And if it helps with visualization, I'm going to go ahead and add some sources as well. So I go here to sources. These will be the inputs to this function. So the things that we'll be able to control in our model were the flow rate coming into our tank and the flow rate going out of our tank. So let's say the flow rate going into our tank is 3 and that's going to be cubic meters per minute. And I'm going to go ahead and label this as Q in. I will go ahead and control C, control V to get another variable and this one is Q out. So let's suppose that what's leaving our system, 
let's say it's 2.5 cubic meters per minute. So we'll have more flow coming in than flow going out. So now we need to define this custom model for our tank. So I'm going to go into my MATLAB function, double click on it. This gives me, uh, it, you have to have this term function here to tell, it that, to tell MATLAB that this is a function. Here I give my function a name. So I'm just going to call it tank inside these parentheses this is where you define the inputs to your model so I'm gonna say uh, my inputs are Q in comma Q out so I need to feed this function block these inputs Q in and Q out if you remember from our model um, that we had our differential equation was dvdt equals q in minus q out. So in Simulink when I write these models I set it up so that we solve explicitly for whatever is on the left hand side. So this value on the left hand side, this dvdt, we need to solve explicitly for that. It's already in that format conveniently so dvdt is just going to be the output of my function. So I come back in here, pull up my Simulink model. So notice you can go in and out of this function by double clicking, or if you want to go back out of the function to your full model, you can come and click here. Um, so I'll go back into my model. I need to give this an output. Uh, this output needs to be a single variable, so having that divide sign in there doesn't work. Uh, so I'm just going to call this little d, capital V, little d, and then t, so dv dt. All right, so now I've defined my two inputs and my output, and I need, so Simulink is giving me some warnings, and we can hover over those. It's saying, oh, you have a variable defined as an input, but it might be unused. So it's gonna tell us, hey, why do you have this variable if you never use it? On the output for dvdt, it's saying, oh, you, your function needs to calculate this output, but you haven't defined it yet, so this function won't work if it doesn't do the job that it's told to do. So I'm just going to come here. This is just a simple one line of code. I'm just going to say dv dt is equal to q in minus q out. And notice how all those warning messages went away because I'm now I'm using both of my inputs and I'm defining my output. Uh, Simulink also wants us to put a semicolon here, so it tells us don't print this the value of this line out every single time you run and that's a pretty good thing to do. Alright so I come back to Untitled um, back to my Simulink uh, canvas so because I've defined these two inputs in my function it automatically lists them as inputs in this block because I named my function as tank it automatically gave it that name I can also name it tank here if I want this is just for display nothing else so my function is called tank. It also automatically defines this dvdt. So I can just connect my blocks. I have flow coming in at 3 cubic meters per minute. I have flow going out at 2.5 cubic meters per minute. Um, my simulation is going to run for 10 minutes. Um, I'll just call this, let's do 100 minutes and just see what happens. So this is going to tell me my function is programmed only to calculate this rate of change. So my function only tells me how fast is dvdt changing. If you recall from the previous lecture, uh, we can do a an integrator block. So I'm going to go here under this continuous tab. I'm going to find that integrator block, drag it over. So if I take this derivative dvdt and I integrate it, that is going to give me the volume of the liquid in my tank. If I double click on here, I can also specify an initial condition. So right now, my tank, when my, I start my simulation, it's going to have a volume of zero cubic meters. Let's change that to say 10 cubic meters. And we will integrate that volume. So we also want to see what's actually happening here. So one thing that I can do is go back to my sinks uh, in the library browser, I can either grab a display or a scope. I'm going to grab the scope because I want to see uh, what's actually ha happening over the whole simulation. So what I would expect to see is we have more flow coming in than going out. Um, so I'd expect to see this volume of liquid in the tank gradually and linearly increase over the whole length of my simulation. So when I double click on my scope, 
That is definitely what we see. We see our initial condition of 10 cubic meters, and over this 100 minutes, that volume increases to 60 cubic meters. So again, pretty simple. This shows you the power of customizability. Um, this is a fairly boring simulation, so what we could do is look at uh, changing flows. So we could look at different sources. We could have our inflow come from uh, a random number generator, or it could be like a pulse. Let's try this uh, pulse generator. So let's say we have large pulses of flow that come in. Let's give this pulse an amplitude of five. This is gonna be cubic meters per minute. We're trying to stay true to the, um, the numbers we defined. So it's got an amplitude of five. This, it's gonna have a period of 10. This says seconds, but we have arbitrarily changed the time to be minutes. So it's gonna have a period of every 10 minutes. It'll go through a full cycle. We want it to pulse, let's say 50% of the period is gonna be uh, at the high value. 50% of the period is gonna be at the low value. Um, so let's see what it looks like when we pulse our system with, it's gonna oscillate between a flow of five and a flow of zero. So we should see the volume in our system zigzag up and down and yes that is indeed what we find. So when the when you have this big pulse of flow coming in your volume increases then when you turn the flow off flow is still going out of our system when we go back down to that initial value. So I'm going to stop here. We'll continue adding complexity to our model, and you'll just gradually see the huge power that Simulink has.